Hey you guys and welcome back to another video. I am the Twisted Jedi and this is the next update on the patch for Star Wars Battlefront 2, patch number 1.1 and we do have the official notes from developer Sledgehammer70 on the Star Wars Battlefront 2 website. Now I'm just going to read exactly what he posted to you guys so you can get the full update on what's going to be changed in the patch and it should be going live within the next hour or two depending on what platform you're playing on. So without further ado, let's jump jump straight in and if you aren't yet subscribed please be sure to do so to enter my Star Wars t-shirt giveaway. Jumping straight into his post, he says, Happy New Year from the Battlefront team. In our first patch of 2018, we're delighted to offer a new blast map on the planet Crate and to introduce Iden Versio's TIE Fighter to the roster of hero ships available in Starfighter Assault. Of course, we've also been digging into fan feedback and bug reports to make some fixes and balancing tweaks that we hope you'll enjoy. This is the first of many exciting updates in store, so please keep your feedback coming. We're always listening for ways to grow, fix, and improve the game. So, so guys, I've been saying for a while that I thought we needed more dark side hero ships for Starfighter Assault, and they've done that now and added Iden Versio's TIE Fighter. I think that's going to be really cool, and there's a breakdown of her abilities later in this post, so let's keep moving. It says, New content, Blast on Crate. We're expanding the ways you can play on Crate by bringing this map to the Blast game mode. Battle in the mines among the machinery and crystals left over from the previous occupants. Iden Versio's TIE Interceptor Fighter, now available as a hero Starfighter in multiplayer matches. Iden Versio leads by example from her personal TIE Fighter, custom built for Inferno Squad. This modified TIE has seen heroic service in the name of the Emperor. Iden Versio's TIE Fighter abilities, Afterburner, Laser Barrage, Dual Proton Torpedoes, which are all standard, and then she gets her Inferno Leader, which for the duration of Inferno Leader, all enemies within a radius are revealed to allied players. These enemies receive increased damage from all sources. All pretty standard upgrades for Starfighter Assault so if you want to read more I'll leave the link down in the description and it'll explain exactly what those cards do. Now Iden Versio's TIE also comes with some milestones. Rapid Assault, use Iden's TIE Fighter after burner 25 times, Precision Strike, achieve 25 dual proton torpedo kills, Hope Cannot Save Them, achieve 25 laser barrage kills and Avenge Our Emperor, use Inferno Leader 25 times. Moving on from Iden's Interceptor we get some new hero updates. Now Finn is going to have reduced base damage of his EL-16 from 65 to 45, reduce the time before heat cooldown kicks in from 3.5 to 1.5, and reduce damage of each Deadeye shot from 40 to 30. Now I don't think Deadeye really needed that much, but definitely his base damage for his EL-16 did need to drop down a little bit. Moving on, Captain Phasma will receive reduced heat generation per shot of her F-11D. I didn't really think the heat was an issue, but I definitely think the damage output should should have been fixed so I'm a little disappointed that that wasn't fixed but we'll see how it goes in the gameplay. Lando is going to receive a fixed bug where maximized efficiency was not properly granting cooldown reduction. Some notes for Boba Fett, reduce the damage per rocket of rocket barrage from 90 to 78. I definitely think that's going to be helpful because it was a little bit OP. Reduce the inner damage radius for each rocket of rocket barrage from 2 to 1.5 meters and reduce the outer damage radius for each rocket of rocket barrage from 4 to 3 meters. Classes and special units. The Wookiee Warrior. Thank God we finally get a nerf for the Wookiee Warrior. Reduced Bowcaster Center Projectile Damage Multiplier from 1.3 to 1. Lowered Bowcaster Fall Off Distance at the start from 20 to 10 meters and at the end from 30 to 25 meters. Reshuffled Bowcaster Explosion Damage and Projectile Damage to make Fall Off have higher effect and increased Bowcaster Heat per shot. So they're finally getting that much needed nerf they're not going to be able to spam kill heroes anymore. So I'm really happy to hear about that. Now here come the standard trooper class updates. For specialist, reduced size of scope glint, added scope glint to the following long range weapons, EL-16 HFE, A280, Pulse Rifle and Captain Phasma's F-11D. Reduced heat per shot for the following long range weapons, Vulcan 38X, E5S, DLT-20A, DLT-19X, A180, and DLT-19D. There will also be increase the burst per minute of all infiltration variants from 100 to 130. So it looks like they've buffed up the infiltration a little bit more from when they nerfed it the first time because in the beta it was super OP. Then they put it down a little bit and it was a little bit underpowered and now I think they're trying to find that balance in the middle by changing it again. As for the heavy class, reduce the AoE of supercharged and expanded 
explosive sentry and increase heat per shot for supercharged sentry from 0.015 to 0.017. So I think that's going to be super helpful. The sentries aren't going to be able to take out heroes as easily, although I would have liked to see them do something with the damage output against heroes specifically, not necessarily infantry. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully the change in the heat per shot and the reduced AOE is going to help as well. As for the officer class, reduced explosion damage from the turret when it's destroyed by blaster fire from 150 to 25. So that seems a lot. That's a big change going from 150 damage to 25 damage. So it's going to be interesting to see that in the game and see how it plays out. Here we go with the weapons, the CR2 lower start damage from 17 to 16, lowered end damage from 9 to 8, reduced damage fall off and distance from 40 to 30 meters. Barrage, reduced inner blast radius from 3.5 to 2 meters, increased outer blast radius from 5 to 6, increased explosion damage from 55 to 100, and the Blurg is also going to get a nerf, reduced fall off start distance from 20 to 15 meters, reduced start damage of explosive shot from 29 to 26, reduced end damage of explosive shot from 10 to 8, reduced inner blast radius of explosive shot from 0.8 to 0.7, reduced outer blast radius of explosive shot from 2 to 1.8 meters, reduce accuracy of the final shots when burst mod is equipped. So a huge nerf for the Blurg 1120 in this update, which is really, really good because it was super OP. If you headshotted someone with that, it was a one hit kill every single time and it just got super annoying. So I'm glad they finally decided to nerf that as well. The trip mine increased the number of mines that can be deployed at the same time from one to two and raised the time until the mines disappeared after death from five to 15 seconds. So that's that's actually kind of helpful because you can place two trip mines around now and you can also have them up to 15 seconds after you die. So that's going to be really, really enjoyable to use. I may end up reattaching my trip mines because I stopped using them for a while there. And just the general fixes, fix the bug where the officer's recharge command and Finn's big deal abilities were not affecting heroes or special units. Fixed an issue where each sector on the minimap would not light up properly the first time an enemy fired. Reduced fade in time for a minimap sector from 0 0.3 to 0 0.1. Stability improvements and miscellaneous bug fixing. So guys, they've changed a whole bunch in this patch. There's a couple of things that I was hoping they'd change that they didn't but I'm sure it's going to play much, much better now, and hopefully all the lag is gone as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a big thumbs up down below, and be sure to comment what your favorite nerf or buff from the patch 1.1 is, and what you're looking forward to in the future of Battlefront 2. Also, leave a comment down below what you think Season 2 of the DLC would be. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I think it's going to be the Clone Wars. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so to enter my t-shirt giveaway. It's super easy to enter and I'll leave details down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I am the Twisted Jedi and may the Force be with you.